Hello folks, Lone Adventurer here. Thank you very much for stumbling your way upon my channel. This is part two of my playthrough of Doom Pilgrim, a grimdark narrative building game from Warclaw Games. If you haven't seen part one, there'll be a link up in the corner of the screen right about now. There are links to where you can find yourself a copy of the game down in the description below. If you find yourself enjoying this playthrough, do consider subscribing to my channel, hitting the bell notification icon so that you see when I release new playthroughs of games like this. We're going to get straight on with it. Now, I would say that we had experienced poor luck so far in the game, but I don't think that is necessarily the case. I think probably what has happened so far is due to my inexperience, which is absolutely fine because I'm currently in the process of building up my knowledge of Doom Pilgrim. So I've made some poor decisions like fighting Sir Longblot, even though I don't have any battle equipment yet or magic weapons, but such is life. And we're going to forge on and hopefully have some slightly more positive encounters I mean, we might lose a limb, we might get diseased or increase our feeling of despair or fear. But we'll have some fun along the way. So if you remember, at the moment, I have got two wounds. We have got one level of degradation, despair, fear and mind disrup disruption. We've got the killer badge because we were forced into the situation where we needed to kill Sir Longblot's squires. Otherwise, we would have died. And we've got the rank of Sir of the Dead Tree. Other than that, not too much to report. So we're going to get three fresh cards off of our deck. And we're going to make a decision. What have we got? We've got a sort of a little castle here in the distance or some kind of tower on a cliff. We've got some shady looking individuals. I don't know if that's something in the background there. And here we've come across some kind of valley with numerous figures that don't look particularly pleasant. I might go with the middle card. These guys look like, I mean, they could be bad, but it's a bit ambiguous. Again, you never know. They, these guys might be all right, but they're filling me with a slightly greater degree of dread than these guys. And I have done a couple of settlements in the last video and they didn't work out for me to my recollection because I didn't have any money yet and I still don't have any gold. So that one's going back under the deck. Hopefully it's positive. Hopefully we will see it again later if we don't die before then. This one's leaving the game and this one we're going to check out. Elder Gods Worshippers. Beings from the deepest pits of time are sleeping, awaiting their return. Now the moment is nearer than ever. You swallow the remark that if the event is to come in the future, the priest's sentence is valid any time. It will be better not to provoke them, as you can be glad they aren't hostile. Oh good, so they're not hostile. In fact, they even ask you to join them. They must have seen some qualities for this honorary post in you. Nevertheless, to join them, you must be a freak. The sum of your confusion, mind disruption and insanity must be two or more. Ah, well, I've only got mind disruption and it's only level one, so I can't join them. And not be a big coward. Dismay and fear in total must be no bigger than one. Well, that's true, but it doesn't matter. If you're qualified, decide. Well, I'm not. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? That's a bit uh, bit of an anticlimax. All right, so we are not a big enough freak, unfortunately, to join the Elder Gods worshippers. We won't read the rest of this. We won't worry about that. We'll just go on and have another encounter. Right, so we've got another towery, foreboding looking building. We've got this dude who seems to be brandishing some kind of weapon at us, maybe. And these guys, 
they don't look like they could be necessarily so bad. I think I'm going to put him to the back. This card out of the picture. And this one we will encounter. Mercenary Warlord. You've met a group of highly armed outlaws. Almost an army. So you would have no chance to beat them. And if you were to flee... Only riding a flying animal, some kind of magic horse, or another super special means of transport can help you. Otherwise, the warlord of the group is making you an offer that you cannot refuse. In a wheezing voice, he reveals vocal cord injuries or even some harder malformation behind the scary helm. He describes your new job opportunities. This doesn't sound good, does it? Choose one or both. Do a one-off job for them. Joining their party for a raid against a manor of a noble that another noble, your payer, does not like. Two wounds that cannot be delegated or prevented, and your salary is five gold. I can't take two wounds. That would. I already took two wounds in the last video. That would take me to four wounds. Oh, I've got to choose one though. All right, number two. No, option number two. Work as a full time mercenary for them. Every third turn after your own event ends, you are called to join a small job and even do a quest on your own, acquiring one inevitable wound and three gold. Oh, man. So I either do the thing that gives me two wounds, which means that one more wound and we'd be dead, or do the thing that would get me one wound every three goes. Oh, man. I think we're going to have to work as a full-time mercenary, which doesn't feel good, but that's what we're going to have to do. All right, so I'm a full-time mercenary, which gets us the outlaw badge. So we are now both a killer and an outlaw. In both cases, you get an outlaw badge that prevents you from trading in towns. You can still trade with dubious individuals. That's a, That sucks. Just going to make a note of that, otherwise I shall forget. No town trading. Well, we haven't been able to do any town trading anyway. Oh, that's rubbish, though. Okay, and then full-time mercenary every third turn after your own event ends. Okay, so I'm going to make a little tracker down here in the psychic drops area. All right, so I've created my little tracker here. So I need to do three goes. After the third go, I gain one wound and three gold. And I've just done two little trackers there because I don't think I'm going to last longer than that. Who knows? Maybe I will, but I don't think I will. All right. Three new options. And remember, when we work our way through this entire deck, we have succeeded in the game. I guess maybe some people manage that. I don't know. Right, so we've got this spooky looking woods. We've got this potentially quite scary looking dragony, demony creature. That looks like some kind of settlement. But now I'm a mercenary. I couldn't trade there anyway. Not that I've got any money or anything to sell. I think we're going to put a scary guy at the back. We'll get rid of that. And we'll have this one here. Travelling through a vast forest. Deep forests are a vast no man's land. Here one can encounter practically anything. Much more likely a bad thing, although beneficial events are not excluded entirely. Such a meeting is sometimes decided by experience, other times by pure chance. Count cards in your past deck. Lower than three counts as three. And if your number is higher than nine, sum up the digits until you get uh, to nine. Okay, so basically how many encounters we've had dictates what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven 
During long silent walks in the forest you meditate about the meaning of all things. Your deep conviction that everything is in vain is hardened. Nihilism plus one. It doesn't apply if you have any human companions. So I'm just having a little sneaky look here. If it's only if you've had nine or more encounters that it helps you. All your stats are fully healed. Does that mean you lose the despair, the fear, the wounds? I guess it does. That's crazy. So worth noting that this is a card worth encountering if you've had nine experiences, encounters, um, or pop into the back of the deck so you can have it later. Such as it is, I've somewhat wasted it. We've just wandered around the woods and and thought about how we, life is pointless and stuff like that. So our nihilism level is going up to one. Nihilism level one. Onwards. I've seen this card before, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. I think I've seen this one as well. I think I'll get rid of these guys. Put these guys to the back. And we'll have this one. Spirit Castle. I think I've had this one. You ate the wrong mushroom during a forest camp. Well, that makes sense because we were just travelling through the forest. Well, yeah, it did taste good and your belly welcomed it as a nice dinner after all day travelling, but the especially vivid and wild dreams that have just come are something one does not wish for every night, if for any night at all. There is a castle in your dream. If you are a worshipper of the old gods, we are not a worshipper of the old gods. We'll skip all of that. Otherwise... It is a castle reflecting your inner darkness or glow. Sum up points of your spiritual fitness. Killer badge, minus three. Oh, wow. Every psychic drop, minus one. Every curse, minus two. We don't have any curses. A dog is a companion, plus two. We don't have a companion dog. Hero badges. What's a hero badge? I feel like I don't have any of those. I've got a killer badge and an outlaw badge. Oh, I see. Hero badge is a specific type of badge. And good heart badge. Wow. This is going to be a very negative score. I don't think it matters how negative, but I'd be minus three. And then I've got five psychic drops, so I'd be at minus uh, eight in total. With negative spiritual fitness, you're a victim of the lowest lusts and fears Waking tired and scared. Plus one fatigue, plus one dismay. And once again, if we'd have been in a positive situation, this would have been a good experience for us. We would have got some gold and healed some stuff potentially. Good times. Not for us though. Unfortunately, not for us. We are increasing dismay. Oh, I don't have dismay yet. Or at least it's not something going up to two. Dismay, plus one, and fatigue. That's another new one. But it's good we've got a, a decent spread of negative uh, emotional, psychological issues going on. Because remember, if we get three on any of these, that means game over. So I've got seven different psychic drops going on. And that was, I forgot to mark the travelling through the forest for our full-time mercenary. Then the spirit castle is our second, which means that after the next encounter, we will be gaining one wound and three gold. So let's have that next encounter now. Wait a minute, shouldn't turn that over, should I? Whoopsie. Mm. I've definitely seen these spider guys before, but once again, I have no recollection of whether it's good. Surely giant spiders can't be good, right? Or maybe I saw the card and I removed it from the game because I didn't want to face them. I think that might be what happened. We've got these dudes here. And a lonely couple off in the distance in some mountains there. Let's not... Should we not have the spiders? 
Now I'm going to put the spiders in because I'm curious. I'm putting the spiders to the back. These guys are going out of the game. And we'll have these two guys here. Two travelling students have stumbled upon you, lying on the stony ground near a big rock. There is said to be a great fortune in a cave here somewhere, but no one knows where the entrance is. Maybe you found it. And have you found the fortune as well, or have you just been stumbling in the dark? Well, it seems you still are stumbling in the dark. Know what I mean. Next time, bring a lamp with you. Might be useful even here outside, as there is no sun all day. Know what? Take this. Our nicest lamp for sure. Oh, we've been given something. If you don't mind, it's broken. Oh, it's a broken lamp. <laughs> okay. That's better than nothing, I suppose. Maybe you really have been in some secret cavern somewhere, but you do not remember, and there is a big bulge on your head. Oh, wow. So we're still feeling the effects of those mushrooms, I guess, and we're not really sure what's going on. You probably managed to return up here and then you fainted, or maybe you just fell off horseback, or a false ally of yours hit you on your head from behind, but you do not remember if you had a horse or an ally. Well, get yourself together and go. The ground is freezing terribly. If you had any allies or animals, they are all gone now, and you don't remember how it happened. Confusion plus one. So we've got another psychic drop. Confusion. I have not ended up with this many negative things going on in the previous games I've played, but like I said, I think it's better to have your psychic in negative psychic points spread out over different issues and we've got a broken lamp where are we going to put that it's not battle equipment it's not a magic weapon it's not clothes provisions so i guess we'll go under miscellaneous broken lamp and this was our third event since we became a full-time mercenary so that means we'll gain one wound Two more wounds and we're dead. But we do gain three gold, so at least we have some gold now. So I've popped the gold up here. Okay, let's do this. Oh, we've got some kind of crazy looking ones here. Hmm, not sure what's going on there. That looks pretty intense. He looks fairly intense. Let's get rid of that one. Put that one to the bottom of the deck and encounter this one. Valley of the Dead Kings. Miraculously preserved mummies of ancient kings lie strewn in this desolate valley. Does a necromancer live nearby? If there is a necromancer card in your past deck, this area serves as an outdoor laboratory where there isn't. Ah, here we go. With no necromancer, this is good news because we would be getting wounds up there. Are we going to get wounds down here as well? I don't know. With no necromancer nearby, the dead kings lay dead and you can search them for up to three ancient artefacts, but not without all danger. You get nihilism plus one when you rob the dead for the first time, plus the dead infection disease if you take another artefact. A third one would bring also the death curse, killing you in 12 rounds. Oh my days. Takings and their order depend on you. Okay, so we've got some things here. We could take a throwing knife which is a bit of battle equipment. We could take Sir Brendan's instep. This relic of the traveller's patron allows you to draw plus one card each turn, then plus one to the bottom. Chain mail, battle equipment. A magic weapon, the blade of the Lemurian king, a very powerful enchanted scimitar. Any benefit it can bring as a magic weapon is doubled when you use it but beware that it can only be used once and then crumbles to pieces. Oh, I was thinking of taking that then, but now I'm not so sure that it's worth it. I mean, I definitely, 
I think maybe I should just go for the boring stuff. So I could take the throwing knife, which gets me nihilism plus one. I've already got one nihilism. I could take the chain mail, which would give me the dead infection disease. And that would be our first disease. And again, you have to have three diseases to uh, snuff it. So that would be okay. I think we might do that. We'll risk a second point of nihilism. So we'll get nihilism plus one going up to two nihilism. We will have the dead infection disease. But as a result of that, we get a throwing knife and chain mail. So we're probably not in too bad a position here, fingers crossed. The only thing making me twitchy really is the large number of wounds that we've got. So it would be nice to be able to do some healing before too long, especially given that this is our second, we're starting our second stint as a full-time mercenary here. After the next two goes, we'll be gaining an additional wound. Let's do another go. So we've got these guys, this dude with his little bird companion. He might be all right. How's anyone who has a bird a bad person? We've got this spooky looking figure coming at us and then we've got this weird creature here that doesn't look like good times at all i think we'll get rid of that one we'll put him on the bottom of the deck and have this encounter here witch of the snow forest what fortune brings such a handsome hero to a poor old woman Though I admit I have got some hidden qualities you might want to seize. Oh, she can do good things. For one gold piece, she would cure a disease or a curse of your choice. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I've only got one disease and no curses. Only once her supplies of the home brew elixir are not bottomless. I see. On the other hand, she can prepare an even stronger elixir for your backpack that would cure all diseases and curses. That would we'd have to give her an eye for that. But we only have again we only have one disease. If you can't afford to lose your eye, or if you cherish it too much, you can also offer her a piece of flesh from your hip, plus two wounds. Well, I can't do that. I can't. I can't um, gain wounds at this point. She can also prepare a magic necklace that protects its wearer from all future curses. For that, we would give, have to give her a werewolf fang. Or if you are interested in none of these, she can offer you her body for a night in the hut. Oh, my days. It's all getting a bit steamy. She swears she will change her appearance for this special event, but on the other hand, she insists there will be no candles burning. So better think twice gross all right i don't think i need to do any of these things i'm certainly not spending the night with her it's a shame she can't heal wounds but but she can't so there's nothing we can do and we need to crack on we've got this guy in a spooky skull boat this dude here on like a mountain pass or maybe in a cavern or something and then a ominous looking cave they all look kind of interesting they all look like they could be bad or could be good i might go for the cave i think we'll lose that one we'll put this guy at the bottom of our deck or oh, one thing i did forget to do was uh, mark the previous encounter on our full-time mercenary tracker. So after we've had this encounter, we will have to go and fulfill our mercenary duties. Cold Mountain Cavern. Most probably this cavern, hidden in freezing mountains, used to be an outlaw shelter. 
but many signs reveal it as being deserted for some time. The winds blow awfully this evening, so you take the cave as your own shelter for this night, outlaw or not. Well, I am an outlaw, aren't I? Before setting up your camp inside, you complete a small search of the cavern. The outlaws left some things here, and you, your experience as an adventurer, the total number of cards in your past deck, decide how many of them you find in the cave system. Right, so how many cards we got in our adventure past deck? One, two. We've got 12. 12 cards in our past. Which means, look at this, we actually get some stuff. We're actually getting some stuff. Okay, so I'm just curiously looking ahead. And if you have more than 20 cards, actually a negative thing happens. So you want, uh, this is a place to visit if you're sort of part way through your adventure. And we get a shield and two gold pieces. So we've actually got a fair amount of battle equipment now. Might not help us, because we might just die anyway. But uh, feels good to have some stuff. And two gold pieces. That takes us up to five gold pieces. It would be nice to have the opportunity to spend that before we snuff it. So this is our third encounter since we last did our mercenary task. So that means we're going to gain one wound. That's the last wound we can gain. We've got four. If we get a fifth wound, it's game over. And it gets us three gold, so we are up to eight gold. So if only we could cure these wounds and maybe become a little less nihilistic, then we'd be doing all right. Onwards. Hmm, okay. We've got a settlement where we can't, we can't trade, but maybe there would be a chance of being healed there. These guys do not look like they're going to heal me. And this one looks pretty spooky. Some kind of weird, extended, spooky figure at the bottom there. So we're going to get rid of them. Spooky Jester guy is going to go on the bottom. And we're going to have this encounter here. Secluded Haven. Seems like a nice sanctuary. Far enough from the hustle and bustle of the big world... You want to regain your strength here, refresh yourself, and maybe buy some equipment as well. Local people were kind, very kind, calm, serene, and smelly. You should have known it. They are all terminally ill. You have taken refuge in a huge leprosorium among those who are already reconciled with life and death. Great. Flip a coin. Heads, you've got leprosy, you are sure. Tails, you've got leprosy, but you still believe you have not. What? Okay, I mean, it feels like I don't really need to flip a coin. Or do not. I'm going to pass on flipping a coin. Basically, that means we've got leprosy. So that's our second disease. We've now got dead infection and leprosy. It's starting to feel like there's a decent chance... We're not going to last much longer. And I'm just going to mark that on the full-time mercenary tracker as well. What have we got here? Tower with some kind of figure in front of it. These guys do not look friendly. They don't look friendly, but they might be. And then this guy and a stag. I don't know. I feel like any of these three cards could finish me off. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to put the tower and that figure to the back. Green Knight. Going through a deep, misty forest, you meet a noble figure, a tall warrior, more like a god than a man. And there stands a majestic deer beside him. The deity addresses you with an unmanly, deep but not unpleasant voice. Don't fear us, O pilgrim of fate. Yes, you would be no match for the forces we represent, but we don't want to put harm on you. We believe you might be our champion in the nowadays world that slowly forgets about the green. 
we had to retreat to the shadows of the darkest forest while the so-called god continues to confuse people's minds with fairy tales of sin and redemption. The true story is much simpler. Life and death, growth and decay, power and weakness. You know it the same as we do. So behold, this is Jeleniah, the dear god of Atlantis, one of the only few immortals and indestructible still living on this corrupt plane of existence. He will accompany you on your quest if you are really worthy. I'm not worthy, am I? I'm clearly not worthy. To get and keep this companion, you need either both good heart and hero badge or a blasphemer badge. Also, you cannot have any curse or killer or saint badge or any Christian relic. Yeah, basically, I can't do this. I do not get the dear God. That sucks. Oh, it does all sorts of cool things, but we don't get it. No dear God companion for us, but at least we didn't die. But that is likely to change now because this is going to be our last encounter before we have to go and work as a mercenary. And unfortunately, that mercenary job will give us a wound and that will finish us off. So here we go. If I don't pick a card that allows us to heal a wound, it's game over. Do any of these look like they're gonna allow us to heal a wound? He doesn't, does he? He doesn't look like a wound healer. Maybe he was, we'll never know. So we've got this chap here sitting with his dogs and we've got this um, much more uh, mysterious card We've got some kind of building in the background there, I think. I think I'm going to have to go for that one. Here we go. Oh, I had it upside down. Ah. Should we look at it the right way up? Oh, wow, that makes much more sense, doesn't it? What a Muppet. That's clearly a bridge. <laughs> look at that. Okay. Well, this is the one we're going to go with anyway. Split City. Only a narrow bridge over the bottomless pit connects two parts of the old city. Acceptance awaits you in one part, doom in the other. But into which one have you just come? Astrological constellations decide, is it an odd or even day of the month today? Read only the applying. I have no idea what day of the month it is. All right, it is the 12th today, so it is an even day. And I think, had it have been an odd day, it would be game over. You're welcome here. You can have yourself or your allies healed. Three gold for every one wound. My days. And we can sell monster trophies, but we can't trade anyway because we're a mercenary. But that means that just by the skin of my teeth, I've survived. And I think I'm going to have to spend as much gold as I can to heal. So three gold to heal one wound. I'm going to spend six gold to heal two wounds, meaning that we're back down to two wounds and we can forge on. So we're going to carry on our mercenary life, gaining three gold and a wound but we live to fight another day. Now we are getting quite far through the deck here. I think there is an actual chance that we might make it through unless we are diseased one more time or we have some kind of nihilistic experience. So probably we won't, but we might. Let's have a look. We've got this sort of deserted area. I think I'm gonna put that to the bottom of the deck. This castle here, I think we're going to lose. And we're gonna have this encounter, just because it looks a bit more interesting. Might be bad, but let's find out. Hounds Trainer. If you have a killer badge, the hounds feel this wickedness, oh no, from you and attack you, no matter their trainer shouting stop it fiercely. Though he would love to kill you too, 
if he had the same nose, or if he can smell that we're a killer. It brings two wounds before you manage to get out, or just one wound if you are mounted. Oh no, what a disaster. So we gain two wounds, is that right? No way of getting around it. I'm not mounted, am I? I didn't get our uh, our lovely stag god mount, unfortunately. So that means we're getting two wounds. And that is that for our hero. Oh, well. Got pretty close there. But that's it. That's our playthrough of Doom Pilgrim. Unfortunately, not a success. But a very evocative narrative experience and one that felt very different to my previous playthroughs and you've got to remember this is our past these are our cards that we haven't yet encountered and these are the cards that we didn't play with so the base game comes with 90 of these big old chunky cards and these 90 cards provide such a broad range of unexpected, gloomy, unpleasant, surprising experiences that your game's always going to be different. And as you become more familiar with the cards, you can, uh, you can, you know, play the game more effectively. You can think, oh, this card, I know it does something positive but it's not going to do something positive for me right now, so I'm going to put it to the back. Or you might think, this card here, I know this card is bad if you're an outlaw, so I might as well remove that one from the game. Or this card allows you to heal, or this card allows you to do that. And that's the game, I think. It's mitigating the various negative things that happen, trying to build up, some equipment and clothes and provisions and things like magic weapons, companions, trying to get your character through their experience in this desolate, doomed world and have an interesting narrative experience yourself as you go. So there you go, that's Doom Pilgrim. It was uh, Daniel at the Dungeon Dive's best a small game experience that he had in 2023. I just watched that uh, video of his a few days ago and I was very pleased for uh, Warcore Games that Daniel recognised this game in that way. And now's a good time, I think, to be getting into it because it's a game that the designer is very keen on supporting and growing He's adding new cards, new mechanics, I believe, to broaden the experience and just to add more narrative flavour to it. It's a game that's going to keep on growing, I think, and it's already a really enjoyable experience. I hope you enjoyed that playthrough, folks. So check out the links in the description below if you want to get yourself a copy, and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you. And bye for now.